Welcome back to the show. Today we're going to show you quickly how to use the Hasselblad X-Band. Imagine you just bought one and you don't know, or a friend loans you one, or your family, and so on. So it's a very simple camera. It's a panoramic camera made by Hasselblad in partnership with Fuji. Very simple. First of all, you need to have batteries. It's a battery-operated camera. You have a tripod socket here. It uses two CR2 batteries with a plus going downwards, and then use a coin. You can use 100 yen or any coin that will fit in there. Once it has batteries, you can see that it shows the battery indicator here, ISO and so on. First thing we're gonna do is load film. So we're gonna go ahead and open the back and load film. I have videos on loading film and unloading, but just in case, we grab our 35 millimeter film. Uh, it uses 35, 36 exposures or 24, black and white, color negative, slide and so on. And once we close it, this camera will wind all the film out and then we'll shoot and put it back into the cassette. So when we see that, it means it's working. It's going all the way into this side of the camera and then winds. This is great because it won't uh, expose your film if you open the back accidentally and also it could calculate the frames depending if you're shooting panoramic or full frame because this camera can shoot panoramic or full frame images. So how to use it? First of all, this is aperture on the lens. We have aperture here in clicky, you can hear the clicks. And then if you want to change the lens, you have a button here. So we press it and turn it to take it off. We have the red dot on the lens, red dot on the body. We have to align those, basically turn it and we hear click and that means the lens is on. And we can actually see the uh, aperture because it's a range finder camera. So we see that. That range finder means you look through here and you focus with these two windows through the viewfinder. You're not seeing what you're shooting exactly. As it's a range finder camera to focus, basically you have to look through the frame here and it has this other window on the side here, and you move the focus to focus. And what you'll see is a double image, like if it was broken, like a ghost image. And when you see those two images go together and be all one, basically that's when you're focused. So that is how you focus a rangefinder. It's a little different than SLRs because you're not seeing what you're shooting through the lens, but you're actually seeing what the camera sees through this window and the rangefinder patch. So you make sure you don't cover that because you won't see the patch. So once we've loaded the film, all we have to do is set the DX code either to the whatever DX code is on the film, that's the ISO speed, or press the button and turn this wheel to change to any other settings. Let's say we wanna push our film, pull our film and so on. But if we want DX, just keep it at DX. Then the camera knows what ISO is on the camera and shoots accordingly. Then we have here shutter speed dial. We have 1 1,000th and we can turn manually. That's the flash sync, 1 1 25th. We can go all the way down to bulb. And then we can go to A, which is aperture priority. You saw it locked, so now it doesn't move. This means that whatever setting we choose on the lens, the camera itself will choose the uh, speed it needs on its own. This is great if you're kind of going on a sh quick shooting, but if you want to have more control, you can actually go into the settings. When you actually press a little bit through the viewfinder, you'll see a red dot in the middle when it's perfect, plus to the right, minus to the left. That means overexposed or unexposed. So that's what you need to check depending on what you're shooting. Uh, and it's probably metering through the lens, but just in case you always want to be careful on how you expose, if you're not sure, keep it on A. Then we have plus minus overexposure, so compensation. We can actually go here to minus one, plus one, all the way to minus plus one and plus two, sorry, minus two, plus two. And then we have here off, camera's off, on but single shot, C for continuous, and the last one is self timer, which means we press, it will do a self timer. We can see here a little light, and it will probably be around 10, 15 seconds. You can see blinking. It'll take a shot on its own, go to the next frame. And as you can see, the frames are changing here. We have 19 shots and it says P as in panoramic. This camera has the option to change the, the you know, size of the frame. So you press and you turn it and now it's on normal full frame, has 33 shots. And now we take a picture, oh, well, it's self timer. So it's gonna take a little time. But when we take a picture, basically it's sh changing the film to shoot 36 exposure, normal full frame pictures. Let's put it back onto normal. But basically you can see, and the moment we press it back to panoramic, press it and turn it, it goes ahead and changes the exact size and moves the film inside. One cool other feature is 
the fact that you can see this shutter speed here. You can all see it through the window, that's on the model step two, but here you can see. So here we're seeing the shutter speed that we have chosen. But if we are in automatic, it will choose here. You see one sixth, if we point up, or we have more light, one twentieth, if we go dark, two seconds and plus. So that's how you see the shutter speeds. We have a hot shoe here for flash photography if we want. And basically that's all there is to the camera. We have the straps here, we have the tripod uh, on the bottom, and that is it for the camera. We're gonna go through all the pictures basically to show you the inside of the camera quickly. But we could also rewind here. So we grab a pen and rewind, and now it will rewind. Also it shows the ISO of the DX code just in case you need to know that. But you can see it's gone all the way. Once it finishes, shows empty. We open the side, sorry, open the side, pull out a roll, and that's it. So if you wanna see how it changes when we press here and move, you'll see how the film changes. You see, full frame and panoramic. That's the beauty of this camera. So yeah, that's how you use the Hasselblad X-Pan. I know it's a really nice camera. Most people shouldn't need to know this, but just in case you pick one up and you're not sure, something might be wrong with your camera, you wanna make sure how it should use or work in good conditions, that is how this camera works. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.